This is React Cast's episode 8, Selectors in Redux. Selectors are neither something you import from Redux nor an external library you must install, but they are present in many Redux projects nonetheless. Technically, selectors are just convenience functions used for looking up and retrieving snippets of data from the Redux store into your components. They play an important role as they help cope with derived and related data, allowing Redux to store the minimal possible state. But before we go too far, let me walk you through the sample application I'm going to use to show some practical selector examples. It's a hotel reservation app built with React and Redux. The UI is pretty simple, it just displays information about the current user and his or her reservation. I have this API folder with a fake API JavaScript file. It already has some hard-coded sample data, but it acts as if this data is being fetched from a remote server. The API is invoked by the actions. I have a file with auth-related action creators and a file with hotel rooms-related action creators. I'm using Redux Thunk here to deal with promises returned from my API. The only exported actions are login, which will fetch the user data, including reservation data, and fetch rooms, which will fetch all available hotel rooms, with their names, descriptions, and photos. Finally, let's take a look at the app component. It uses React Redux Connect to dispatch both login and fetch rooms actions. It waits for both actions to complete to display the data. Listen, if this whole Redux setup is new to you, I recommend that you take time to properly learn Redux before continuing. There are lots of great ways to learn Redux. My React book has a free, 40 pages long, comprehensive chapter on Redux, and the link is available on the video description. I will also give a full day workshop on Redux at the Forward Web Summit early next year. If you're interested, you can find more information on the video notes. Now, let's check the application on the browser. I have Redux developer tools already set up here, so let's take a look at the store state tree. Okay, we have the user data, his or her registration information, and a list of all available rooms. Currently, I'm just showing the user's first name, and as my first example, I want to render the user's formal name, complete with the appropriate title, Mr., Mrs., or Miss. This is what we call derived data, computing some new data based on the original data available on the store, by concatenating, inferring, and doing any other sorts of transformations. Now, this computation doesn't really belong in the render method of our component. Just to mention one reason, I don't want it to get re-evaluated and processed again on every new render. What I've seen lots of people doing this kind of computation is on the map state to props function. So I'm starting there as well. So I'll start by creating a variable to hold the user title. So let user title. If the user gender is male, the title will be Mr. Else, if it's not male, I'll check if marital status is married. If it is, then the user title will be equal Mrs. And finally, on the last else, the only remaining option is Miss. Finally, I'll create a new constant to hold the complete formal username, and it will be the result of concatenating the user title with the user's first name and the user last name. On my render method, I'll get username from props and render it. Let me check again on the browser, and it works, great. Yeah, but you know, this implementation's still a little smelly. You see, map state to props is supposed to be a simple mapping function, and we're doing a lot here. Besides, what if I want to reuse this derived data on other components? Should I copy and paste code? Well, of course not. So there's a better, cleaner way of calculating derived data. Selectors. Now, I already mentioned that selectors are utilitary functions. You can create them anywhere you want on your project, but given that they deal with your application state, they usually declare together with your app's reducers. 
So I will start by cutting this code from map state to props. Then I will open auth reducer and create a new selector here. I'll call it select username. Listen, selectors are just ordinary functions. Again, it's not part of the Redux library and as such, it doesn't have any special access to data. So if I want to deal with the state, it should receive the state as a parameter. Assuming that this state parameter here is already expecting just the off part of the state, I can paste the normal code here and just update the variable name. Here. Let me return the derived data here. And now this selector can already be used within map state to props on any container component. So back to my app component, I'll import it here. Import select username between curly brackets because it's not the default export but a named export from reducers off. Then on map state to props, I can just say that username equals select username, passing the off part of the state. Let's check. Great, it still works. But now the code is abstracted away from the component, from the mapping function. And you can find it together with all the other functions that deal with state, the reducers. Now, this is already very good. But there is still one more improvement I'd like to make. You see, many Redux applications structure their reducers in this way. Each reducer in its own individual file, and then an index file that uses combined reducers to combine all individual functions in one main reducer. In applications structured this way, it can be very helpful and practical to centralize your selectors. To do this, I'll simply create a function with the same name, select username, accepting the state. This select username will simply act as a shortcut, but it will receive the whole state and call the original select username passing along only the specific part of the state. Now, I am already using select username, so I can simply import select username again. It would raise a duplicate declaration error. So instead, I will import and name it export from off into a namespace, like this. Import auth and any declared export it might have as from auth. Back on my function, I need to call from auth dot select username. Since this is all in one line, I don't need parentheses. From now on, any components that need to access data through selectors don't need to know in which file the selector is defined. All selectors are available in the index reducer. On map state to props, I also don't need to know which piece of the state I need to pass along. I just pass the whole state. Great, still working. Let's do another example. Now, I told you that selector functions can be useful for computing derived data, but they can also be useful for relational data. Look at the state tree again, specifically at the user reservation. See how it contains just the ID for the selected room? I need to check the other piece of state to find the appropriate room by ID. Here it is, the deluxe room with ocean view. Let's create a new selector. This time, I'll create the reducer directly on the index file, since I want to get data from both off and rooms. I'll create a new function called select user room, accepting the state. In this function, I'll get the current user registration information and the list of rooms. Next, I will find the room whose ID matches the user registration and return it. Simple as that. Back on my app component, I'll import select user room. Then on map state to props, I'll call it passing the state. On my render function, I can now display the reservation info. I'll just paste it here. Let's check again on the browser. Awesome. And that's it for selectors in Redux. All in all, it's a good practice for where and how to calculate derived data and get related data from your state to render on your components. But there's one more thing. I won't get into many details, but it's important to know that your selectors recalculate the data every time they're called. 
this is hardly a problem within small to medium applications, but it can, you know, potentially become a performance bottleneck in some specific cases. Ideally, your selector functions should be memoized. Memoization is a technique where you store the result of your function calls and return the cached result when the function is called again with the same parameters. Now, there are lots of general function memoization utilities out there, but there is one specific for Redux selectors called reselect. With reselect, you specify which parts of the state you use on your computation, and if these parts of the state doesn't change, it won't recalculate your derived data, just return a cached version. So let's use it. I'll install it using yarn here, but you can use npn as well. Yarn add reselect. Then on my index reducer, I will import it. Now, using the reselect library is pretty easy, but it can get really confusing for beginners. It's really no big deal, but let's not rush this. We start by providing which pieces of data our select user room selectors is interested in. I mean, which pieces of data are used to compute the returned data? Well, that's easy. The user reservation and the list of rooms. In our current implementation of select user room, these information are all on the same selector. But reselect requires us to split them into individual selectors. So let me start by making three copies of this. One will be called select user reservation. It accepts states, you know, returns only the current user reservation, like this. Well, we can actually make this shorter. I don't need to store this on a constant and I can use implicit return and do it all in one line. Right? Given the current state, it returns the user reservation. I'll do the same with my second copy here, transforming it in a selector exclusive for select room list. Finally, I will rewrite my select user run function using reselect. I will use create selector, first passing my two selectors that specify which pieces of data I'm interested in, or to be more specific, which pieces of data are used in the computation. Next, I'll pass a function that will take the results of these selectors and return the actual derived data, in my case, filtering the room list to find based on ID. Let's try this on the browser. Perfect, it still works, but now the selector is memoized, which means that if other parts of your state tree changes, this won't be recalculated. And that's it! You just watched an episode of ReactCasts. As usual, the source code for this episode is available on GitHub, where you can also request new episodes and contribute to the discussion of future episodes. GitHub.com slash Casio Zen slash ReactCasts.